Hello, today we're going to set up a 3D touch and rotation with a Fanico bot. I'm going to start by recording my home point in space. Now I'm going to give the robot an instruction. I'm going to tell it to get ready to start searching for my part. I'm going to press my F1 instruction key. I'm going to go to an option called touch sensor. F1 instruction, touch sensor. Press enter on search start. It's asking for a value here. This first number after search start is gonna be the touch schedule that you have set up. The second value here is gonna be a position register. I'm gonna use position register 18 for this example. What I'm gonna do now is bring my robot into position for my search. So I'm gonna jog the robot into position for my first set of searches. I'm gonna record a point in space. I'm gonna make this a J motion with a fine termination. What I'm gonna do now is record another point in space at the exact same location. However, this will be a linear point with a fine termination. I'm gonna change the position ID numbers to match. The way touch sensing works is you need to have two points at the exact same location in order for the touch to work properly. You need a point for the robot to get to that location and you need a second point telling the robot to perform a search from that location. To tell the robot to search from that location, you're going to cursor to the end of the line, one point past find, you're going to press F4 choice and select search. In this example here, I'm going to have the robot search towards me, which is the Y plus direction. Now I'm going to jog the robot into the second Y direction search. I'm going to record two points at this location. They're both going to be a linear motion with a fine termination. I'm changing the position ID numbers to match. I'm going to cursor to the end of the line, one point past fine, press F4 choice and select search. This is my second Y search, so I need to have it search in the Y direction. Now I'm going to get the robot into position for my X searches. I'm going to move the robot up away from the part and record this point. This is just a safe location to maneuver the robot in space around the object so I don't crash. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the robot into position for my two X searches. I'm going to record a point here. I'm going to make it a J motion with a fine termination. I'm going to record a second point at the exact same location, and this will be a linear motion with a fine termination. I'm changing the position ID numbers to match. F4 choice and select search. Going X minus. That's my first X direction search. Now I'm gonna teach the robot in the second X direction search. I'm gonna record two points at this location. I'm gonna change the position ID numbers to match. I'm gonna cursor to the end of the line, one point past fine, F4 choice, and I'm gonna tell the robot to search in the X minus direction again. In order for a 3D and rotate to work properly, it's gonna require a total of seven touches. Two in the X, two in the Y, and three in the Z. Now it's time to start teaching the Z direction searches. I'm gonna pull the robot up into position, away from the part, so I can do all my air moves and not crash into the part. I'm gonna bring my robot into position now for my search for my Z direction. I'm gonna record my first point, the robot getting there, and this is gonna be a J motion with a fine termination. I'm gonna record another point in the exact same location. This will be a linear motion with a fine termination. Again, I'm changing the position ID numbers to match. Go to the end of the line. I'm gonna tell it to search in minus Z. That's gonna be my first Z. My second Z direction point, I'm gonna get the robot into position for my search. I'm gonna record two points at this location, change my position ID numbers to match, go to the end of the line, F4 choice and select search. Again, I'm gonna do a minus Z. Now my third and final Z direction point, I'm going to bring into position. I'm gonna record two points at this location, change my position ID numbers to match,
At the end of the line, I'm gonna press F4 choice and select search. Search in minus Z. Now, the 3D in rotate requires seven touches. I did two in the Y, two in the X, and three in the Z. I need to tell the robot to stop searching. F1 instruction, go to touch sensor, and select search end. What I'm gonna do now is get my robot into position for welding. I move my robot to a safe location. I'm gonna record that point. Now every point after this, all my motion points, I'll have an approach, a weld start, a weld end, and the escape point. I want those points to move with my part. I have to give the robot an instruction to do that. F1 instruction, go to touch sensor, select touch offset. I'm gonna use the PR that I used in my program earlier. In this example, it was PR 18. So now I'm gonna teach my program like normal. I'm gonna come in to my weld start location. I'm gonna teach my weld end position. I'm gonna teach my escape position. And I'm gonna tell the robot to go back home. However, I do not wanna shift my home position. So at this point, I'm gonna give the robot an instruction to stop offsetting. Press your F1 instruction key, go to an option called touch sensor, and select touch offset end. I'm gonna record my final point, change the position ID number to one, to send the robot back home. Now before I run my program, I'm gonna verify my touch schedule set up properly. My master flag on line two is turned on. My pattern type is set for a 3D and rotate. And now I'm going to run my program. First time I recommend running your program with the master flag on so the robot learns the location of the part. Then we're gonna run the program again with the master flag turned off You'll see that here in a second. We just did our Y direction searches, and now we're gonna do our X direction searches. After our two X and two Y, we're gonna go ahead and do our three Z searches now. Here's our first Z search, second, and third. Now the robot's gonna run its taught path that we just created. This is all with the flag on, so the robot's learning the master position of the part. I'm gonna go in my touch schedule now and turn the flag to the off position. Data, master flag off, and now I'm gonna run my program again. It's always a good practice to execute your program with the master flag turned off. This is where your errors would appear. If there's a fault, it's better to correct it before moving the part. That's why we always test it with the master flag turned off to verify the robot accepted the touch. We did our two X's, our two Y's, and now we're doing our three Z's. Everything went through with the touch routine. Now the robot's gonna run the program. When the program's complete, we're gonna move the part. All right, everything looked good. So now we're gonna go and shift the part. Because this is a 3D and rotate, I'm gonna put these spacers underneath the part to change the elevation, change the height. And I'm gonna rotate the part slightly. Now try not to over rotate the part. Gotta keep in mind your program points for your touch. We did our two Y's. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our two X's. And now we're gonna go ahead and do our three Z's. One, two, and third and final Z. Now the robot's gonna run down the path 
applying the offset from the 3D and rotate touch. This is how you set up and execute a 3D in rotation with a Fanuc Cobot.